Transitions are used to link the constant geometry elements, straights and curves, together. They allow the smooth transition between different levels of radii and can. Their length is the key feature that manages this comfortably for both passengers and freight. But what happens if there is not space to fit in a transition? This is where virtual transitions, or VTs, come in. A virtual transition is an instantaneous change of geometry with no physical transition length. The design of transitions is governed by the rate at which can, and therefore can deficiency, changes. This is measured in millimetres per second. The longer the transition length, the more gradually the can can be changed, giving lower rates of change values. The equations shown are used when designing a transition. They can be used in two main ways. Using a length to solve for the rate of change that can be checked against the standard, or using rate of change values and solving for the length. This can be used to find the minimum acceptable lengths by the standard. So length is a key part of transition design. But if a virtual transition is an instantaneous transition, how does this all work? The answer is 12.2 metres. But why 12.2? 12.2 is the distance between the bogey or wheel set centres of a Mark I coach used by British Rail. In effect, this means that the train starts to be subjected to change when the first bogey passes over the VT with any changes in forces happening. This continues until the second bogey crosses the VT when the forces on the train will be the same. So we can say that the change in radius happened within the distance between the two wheel sets, 12.2 metres. So where would you find a virtual transition? You can find them between curves of different radii, but the same can. You find them at the toes of switches on the turnout route, and also at changes of the radii within the SMC. Now, the most important thing to remember, apart from the 12.2, when it comes to virtual transitions, is the fact that the cant either side of the virtual transition must be the same. Only the radius changes. Because of this fact, it's very normal to see on designs only the rate of change of deficiency stated for virtual transitions. The rate of change of cant will be zero, as there is no change in cant. This means that the rate of change of deficiency equation is the one that we'll focus on when working with virtual transitions. So there you have it you now know what is meant by a virtual transition. I hope you found this video useful and informative. If you have, please give that like button a click. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to drop them in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe to get all the latest videos and to help support the channel. Thank you.